in this video I'm going to be doing a screen, um, a laptop screen swap uh, for the ThinkPad P51. So this is a laptop that I got uh, last year. So I never was satisfied with the 1080p uh, color gamut because it's only like 49% color gamut. Um, so I got this replacement screen from laptopscreens.com. Going to be showing how to actually change the uh, display out if you guys want to do that for a better color gamut. So I ordered one that has a color gamut of 72%. Which is I think is like 90% uh, sRGB. So we'll see. Um, this is kind of like a before picture example that I'll be using. This is just the default Windows desktop background. So you can see the blue uh, and then the rock formations is on the default color profile uh, right from the uh, computer itself. So first thing we'll do is we'll shut it down. I'll show how to do the screen disassembly. You have to remove the battery make sure the AC power is disconnected before you proceed and then uh, we will change the camera angle here and we'll be right back okay so once you uh, shut down the laptop of course you want to make sure that the power cable is disconnected from the laptop you're going to flip it over and you're going to disconnect the external or removable battery so the, the nice thing about the P50 and the P51 is it comes with a removable battery so you don't have to actually take off the bottom cover to access the battery and swap it out so we're going to put that over to the side up there and now we're going to flip it back over we're only going to be working with the LCD screen here so uh, what you're going to do is on this particular model you're just going to pry the and you don't want to be too rough on it you just want to be gentle you want to pry the bezel cover um, off and it's just it's only held on by a couple of clips so you're gonna work on it here and you may want to like tilt it further down so you can get at it get at a better angle um, I think there is actually a little bit of glue okay the inverter and all that stuff is down there There it goes. There we go. All right. Yeah, you can see there's a little bit of like a seal there, I guess, to keep like water out or something, but or hold it in better. But once that's off, you can see the uh, the actual panel. And it's held in by these four screws. So there's going to be one. Looks like well, there's one right there. Let's see. And then there's going to be one on the right side, top right, uh, bottom right, this one here. And then again, bottom left, down there. All right. So. Just gonna undo those. Careful not to scratch the LCD screen. I like to keep it just in case uh, as a like a spare. And you don't want to lose these four screws. You want to hold on to them because you're gonna be reusing them to attach the replacement screen. And try not to displace the antenna Wi-Fi cables which are the red, or I guess it depends on the model, but mine has a blue one and a uh, orange one that run around the sides of the display. So it's gonna be up here. And all the screws will be the same size, so. All right, so those are the four screws. There you go. 
Okay, and then you you turn it upside down. Uh, you don't want to tug on it because the cable that we're going to disconnect is down here. Let me zoom in so you guys can see that. But that is the cable. And to undo it, uh, there's a little latch here. Uh, this sticker has to be peeled up so I can get at it. There we go. So you gotta be really careful with that. So what you do is there's a little hinge clip here. You gotta lift that up to unlock it. And then you can get the, you can disconnect the uh, display port, embedded display port, which is EDP for those wondering, to remove the LCDs panel. So now the panel, the old panel is free from the laptop right there. So now I'm gonna swap it with the new one, or the replacement one. I'm gonna put this one down here, and then reconnect the cable. And make sure when you put it back that the, here, let me zoom in for you guys. Make sure when you put it back, so you see, you want to line that up. All right. Put that in, and then, and then this thing should come down. On both sides. There you go. All right, so that feels like that's in. I'm gonna put the sticker cover back on here. Keeps dust and stuff out. All right, and then now we're just gonna put the screen, gonna lift the LCD screen, we're gonna place it back into the position, checking that cable, back into the position that it needs to be in. Once you have the, once you put the screws back in and then you put the bezel cover back on, um, you can see this is like brand new. There's like not a single speck on the screen. I just peeled off the plastic uh, protection cover thing that it comes with in the box. All right, just for those who may run into a problem, I did actually run into this problem, but I am going to show you guys how to fix it. If you power on the display, depending on the panel that you get in the mail, it'll be compatible. It may not be the exact model. So make sure you do check with the seller and specify the exact model if you don't want to have to deal with troubleshooting this issue. But it's a pretty simple fix. Um, in my case, uh, when I powered it on the first time, I got the red Lenovo logo, but then it went to black screen. I couldn't see the display for Windows. When I plug it into the docking station, uh, on the external display it was telling me that uh, the Intel integrated graphics um, is not able to connect to the display so but I know I know the display works because I saw the Lenovo logo so uh, what you do to fix that is you go to the BIOS so when you turn on the computer you press F1 to enter setup which will enter this ThinkPad setup menu you go into config you go to display and under display, you need to change. You only have to do it once. You'll, you'll be able to still use your hybrid graphics. Don't worry for those wondering. Um, you change the the default, which is 256 to 512. And then you change hybrid graphics, which is what causes the problem, to discrete graphics. You change it to discrete graphics. You press F10 to save it. I'm not going to save it because I've already done the fix. But you save it. Then you let it boot up, it will boot into Windows, you'll be able to get in and then um, let it sit there for a while. So it, it'll, I think it'll install some, it has to be connected to the internet, so it'll install some kind of like 
um, driver, whatever it needs to do, because I don't know how to install the Intel driver. I didn't bother looking it up. I'm sure you could probably do that, but there's no need to do that. Basically, set it to discrete. It'll boot up using the op, uh, the Quadro, the NVIDIA Quadro. Uh, then you restart it, go back here into BIOS, change it back to hybrid graphics, save that change, and then uh, you can go ahead also and make sure... I mean, it could be that that's unnecessary. In my case, I changed two variables at the same time, so I'm not sure which one fixed it, whether it's the 512 total graphics memory size or the toggle it between discrete and then back to hybrid. After doing that, I can show you right now, so it's set for hybrid. Uh, we're going to save changes and exit, whatever. Um, and I'm going to show you guys that it works. So for those worried. Um, so there you get the red Lenovo screen. And then there it goes. So once you see the spinning uh, little loading icon thing here, uh, you'll know, or the animation, you'll know that it's going to work. And there we go. So that's basically it. You get your brightness control. It, it, it like goes down in brightness all the way down. It goes up. There we go. There's your prompt. Their on-screen display. Just load it in. So everything seems to work. Um, after doing that, and I still have my hybrid uh, NVIDIA Optimus graphics enabled. So if I'm playing a game like uh, whatever game you're playing, like Final Fantasy 14, I tested it earlier with Final Fantasy 14. Um, it is using the Quadro, and then I can um, make use of the integrated graphics when I'm on battery power, um, so I get better battery life. So it's just, basically, it's just a screen swap. You may have to do this BIOS settings. So that's why I'm, I'm putting this in the video, because I think it's pretty important information, um, just to save people a whole bunch of headaches and, and worry that they got a DOA display. DOA, the display works fine. You just got to do that little um, thing to get to try to like get it, it to get the Intel integrated to work with it. There you go. That's the original background image that we were using for the before and after comparison. Uh, and I can already tell the color gamut is definitely wider. This particular one is a 72% NTSC uh, color space and the sRGB is 90%. Um, so it's, it's better than the other one. It's not the best. It is IPS though, so, but so was the original. So I'm pretty happy with the purchase. I will see you guys in the next video.